heart is safely undone. Speak to us, Lord. Speak to me, Lord. Your servant is listening over the noise. I hear your whisper. My hope is gone, and my heart is safely undone. Church, let me lift our hands, give our voice. I found my fortress in you, and my soul is anchored with you. My resting place is in your name. I found my fortress in you. And my soul is at Lord with you. My resting place is in your name forever. Safe. Forever. Safe. Forever. Safe. that in your name we are safe. How many, how many of you believe that? In Him, we can take refuge. In Him, there's protection. In Him, diba, all things are possible. In Psalm chapter 91, verses 1 and 2, it says here, He who dwells in the shelter of the Most High, He who dwells in the shelter, if we dwell in Him, He promised that we will take refuge in Him. We have His protection. We will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. 
I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Do you believe that? Do you trust in God? In Him, we trust in Him. In Him, there is protection in Him. We can take refuge in Him. In Him, all things are possible. We can conquer all our fears. We can conquer all our trials, even our struggles in life. As long as we will continue to dwell in Him. When we say we dwell in Him, we are... Uh, we will take refuge in Him. We, we, are, we are with a person that we can trust on. And throughout the Bible, from the beginning, from Genesis to Revelation, He dwelt among the people, among His children. And the God that we are serving right now, it's the same God that Jacob, Abraham served. Tama po ba? It's the same God who is faithful then and now and forever. He is present with us all throughout our lives. God, we thank you. Let's continue to pray. Lord, we thank you for this morning, oh God. We trust in you. We will continue to anchor our soul with you because you are faithful. You are good, God, to each one of us, oh God. God, thank you that even right now, Lord, we put our hope in you, knowing, God, that you are reliable. And we will continue to trust in you, knowing that you know everything about us. You, will, you, are, you are watching over us each day, and you are protecting us each day, oh God. Lord, we thank you, we bless you, we honor you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen and amen. Palapakan naman natin si Lord. Ayan, because He is good and faithful. Okay, so, magandang umaga sa ating lahat. And if you are seated beside a beautiful and handsome this morning, I want you to greet that person. Good morning. And oh, good morning din yung nasa likod mo at nasa harap. Ayan. And thank you for coming and joining us uh, on site. Iba, ibang iba pa rin na worshiping God. Tama ba? Worshiping God, listening with the word of God na face to face. And you can... Uh, be able look at, na be able to touch the person beside you and of course those who are joining us online we appreciate you joining but uh, hope that we will also looking forward na makakasama namin kayo dito ayan on site kasi meron pa tayo mal malaki-laki tong binigay ni Lord sa atin na building for us to worship God together ayan so Good morning once again. Uh, I'm uh, er, sa mga hindi pa po nakakilala, ako po pala si Erna Balubal, one of the church staff here at Victory to Gigaraw. And you are joining us, the, joining the 8 a.m. service. And we have four services every Sunday. And then mamaya po after this service, we have 10 a.m. And in the afternoon, we have 3 and 5 p.m. Ayan, so we encourage everyone to invite more, invite your friends, invite your family members, and uh, even the people na nakakatabim nyo sa sasakyan and all, so, so that they can also hear the gospel, the good news of God. Okay? And then uh, this morning or next week, we are going to start a brand new series, but this morning, we will have a series break. Ayan, sabihin sa katabi mo, series break muna tayo. Ayan. Because uh, ayun, next week, we mag mag start a brand new series. So let's get excited, prepare our hearts to hear from this man. is our, our discipleship pastor, very passionate to really uh, see all of us being discipled and going through our journey and uh, live a life purposely in the Lord. So let's all welcome Pastor Joe Poblete. Thank you, Ms. Serna. Yan. Series break po ito. So, maybe it's time also for me to have a review of the past uh, preaching series that we have in the church. Kung ano po yung tumatak talaga sa inyo. May maalala kayo na preaching series? Yan. Pailabas nga natin yung mga title ng mga, kwan, mga preaching series natin for the past years. Ano dyan sa mga... Ah, wala pa. Ano dyan sa mga preaching series na yan ang uh, talagang turning point mo nang sabi mo, ah, ikuwang ko na, ito na. 
Ito na talaga. Yung bumigay ka na, sinurender mo na kay God, yung uh, siguro sa uh, isang kasalanan na tinatago-tago mo, o dilike, yun na yung talagang pag-surrender mo kay God. Yan. Ano kaya sa mga yan? At dami na nating teach, uh, preaching series. Oh. Ang gaganda ng mga yan. Grabe kapag uh, nakita natin yung title ng mga yon. Of course, may isa. Kahit man lang isa siguro no? na maaalala mo. At yun yung uh, turning point ng buhay mo. Yun talaga nagkaroon ng alakas ng impact ng word na yon sa, buh- sa buhay mo. Personally, uh, the, the preaching series that we have Uh, that we had in the past that uh, made a great impact in my life was a preaching series that we had in 2011. Alam nyo kung ano yun? Ito yun. One life to live. Grabe, no? Grabe yung uh, learning ko dyan na 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 ipaalala sa akin na ang, ang iksi pala ng buhay. At kailangan ko mag-focus na i-accomplish yung uh, purpose na binigay ni Lord sa akin. I'm a teacher by profession. Alam nyo sa isang teacher, uh, kung ano yung sinulat mo na objective mo, yun din yung i ng principal mo o kaya supervisor mo na kapag inobserve ka niya sa pagtuturo mo, siguraduhin niya na yun yung pina-exam mo sa mga bata. And so with me, if, I, if God has given me that purpose in life, in the end, yun yung i ni Lord sa akin. So, yun yung uh, uh, learning ko as a teacher. But, uh, of course, that is uh, based from Psalms 90 verse 12. Ang sabi niya doon, yung uh, main verse natin sa series na yan, So, teach us to number our days right. NIV yung na, nakatatak sa isip ko. So, teach us to number our days that we may get a heart of wisdom. Yun po yun, yung main verse na yun. So, kung uh, limited yung number of days lang natin sa buhay na to pala, kailangan natin humingi ng wisdom kay Lord para may pamuhay natin yung gusto niya na mangyari sa, sa uh, isang buhay na binigay niya sa atin. And that is where I got the title of this uh, uh, series break preaching today, A Heart of Wisdom. Okay, so as uh, uh, we study a, a verse... A few verses in the Bible today, this is what we wanna have from God, a heart of wisdom. Na matutunan natin, may apply natin yung salita ng Diyos sa buhay natin at may experience natin yung pagbabago sa ating buhay at makomplis natin yung purpose ni God sa buhay natin. Gusto ba natin yan? Okay, as we do that, we, I, I ask you to stand with me as we read our text found in Ecclesiastes chapter 7, 1 to 4. Ang sabi niya dito, A good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of birth. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting, for this is the end of all mankind, and the living will lay it to heart. Sorrow is better than laughter, for by sadness of face the heart is made glad. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of Mary. Let's bow down our heads as we pray. Heavenly Father, we want to thank you, O oh God, for this morning that you have brought us in this place. Lord, as uh, we just learned from your word this morning, from that verse in Psalms 90, that you teach us to number our days, that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Lord, as we study your word from uh, the journal of King Solomon, that's our prayer Oh God, that you will give us that heart of wisdom that we may be able to live a life that is pleasing unto you. Minister to us through your word, O oh Lord, and use me as a channel of your blessing to your people. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Okay, makako po po tayo. A heart of wisdom. Yeah, of course, that is an idiomatic expression that we can see, we can find in the Bible. And uh, it means we want to apply the wisdom of God so that we will be able to live the words of God. We will be able to fulfill the words of God in our personal life day, every day of our life. Gusto natin yun. Na kung dati, uh, kung ano-ano lang yung klase ng buhay na pinamaalas natin, no? kung paano natin patakbuhin ang buhay natin, nakabase sa mga learning natin kung sino-sino. 
But when we say we, have, we want to have a heart of wisdom, we ask wisdom from God so that every moment of our life, every area of our life is based from the wisdom of God. Okay, so yung uh, kinuhanan natin ng text natin ngayon, of course, hindi part ng series noon yun. That is my personal, that's the personal uh, application in my life that, that, that uh, I'm going to share to you this, this morning. And the book where we got this text is from a person that uh, God blessed with the wisdom. God blessed him with that wisdom. Malala nyo, si King Solomon po yung humingi ng wisdom. Hindi riches, hindi long life, not the death of his enemies, but he asked God for wisdom. That's why this is one of the application of uh, that wisdom that God has given to him. But of course, at the end of that book, in chapter 12, ang ina-acknowledge niya na all those things came from one shepherd, and that is the Lord Jesus. Okay, so... Tatlo lang na puntos na ang haba. That's uh, 12 chapters yung uh, book of Ecclesiastes po. No? But we will uh, uh, learn three of the wisdoms that he listed in chapter 7. And these are, in, these are comparison of things. Because we are presented with a lot of options here in this life. Ang dami po, di ba? Daming mga options na meron tayo. But wisdom is the ability to apply that uh, theory, that knowledge. Kaya titignan natin ngayon kung paano natin din may apply sa buhay natin. So, tignan natin yung verse 1 dito sa text po natin. Ang sabi niya, A good name is better than precious ointment and the day of death than the day of birth. Okay, we'll focus on the second clause of that. Ang sabi niya dito, the day of death than the day of birth. So, point number one is this. The day of death is better than the day of birth. Okay, when we say better, it means to say, good din yung isa. Okay? So, tignan natin, day of birth. Di ba maganda rin na ikaw ay nabuhay? Na ikaw ay pinanganak? Tama ba? Kung hindi pinanganak yung katabi mo ngayon, walang guwapo, walang maganda sa mundo na to na, na kasama sa pamilya na yan, nila. Yes or no? Yes. Kung hindi pinanganak yan at uh, uh, hindi niya ginagawa yung mga mag magagandang ginagawa niya, of course, ngayon, ay uh, kulang yung tuwa na meron sa pamilya nila at sa, 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 sa trabaho nila, sa, sa negosyo, o delikaya, lalo na dito sa church. And we're glad that you're here. Dahil pinanganak muna kayo bago kayo nandito. Sige, palakpakan mo naman yung katabi mo. Grabe, no? Ang ganda, ang gwapo niyan. Ganda ng greeting ni, uh, introduction ni Miss Erna kanina eh. Kaya sabi ko, oh, okay yun ah. Di ba? Yung i-greet mo yung katabi mo, nagwapo at o oh, dili kaya maganda. Because first, before we were created as beautiful and uh, handsome, we were born here in this life. Yun yun. At ang sinasabi palagi ng mga, mga experts natin dito at sinasabi ng word ni God, you are unique. You are what you are. That, that's the, your creation. Your, your coming here in this world shows the wisdom of God. You are an expression of God's wisdom. Dahil wala kang katulad, kapatid. Yung boses mo, medyo katunog siguro ng mga kapatid mo, pero ikaw unique yung boses mo. Yung, uh, yung fingerprint mo, yan, yan, yung, mga, yung iris ng mata natin, ikaw lang ang merong ganyan, kaya ginagamit sa mga security purposes. Because... That is how God designed you. But again, the, go back, going back to our text, the day of death is better than the day of birth. Nung ikaw, pinanganak ka, okay, masaya yung pamilya mo, uh, dahil lalo na kung ikaw yung panganay, panganay na anak, o pang, ikaw yung panganay na apo, ang saya-saya ng nanay, tatay mo, pag panganay ka na po, grabe ang tuwa ni Lolo at saka ni Lola. Yes? Okay yun. Pero sinasabi ng word God, kapag ikaw ay namatay, mas maganda yung panahon na ikaw ay namatay. The day of death is better than the day of birth. I-qualify po natin yun. So balikan natin yung uh, first clause ng, uh, ng chapter 1, uh, verse 1. A good name is better than precious ointment. 
the day of death is only better if you strive or you exerted effort to live a good name. Ibig sabihin, ginawa mo yung nararapat sa iyo sa bilang empleyado, bilang estudyante, bilang nanay, bilang tatay. Kung iyon ay ipinamuhay mo yung salita ng Diyos. And the Bible is saying to us that if we have done our part to live a good name, that while we are still here on this earth, we strive to study the Word of God and apply it. That's wisdom. It's not enough that you know the Word of God, you've memorized it, but you've never applied it. A good name means you live the Word of God, you've studied the Word of God, and you have done your part applying it in your personal life. And the Word says that the day of your death is better than the day that you were born. Kaya, uh, napakaganda po ng mga example na meron tayo sa Bible. Be, hindi rin perfect yung mga tao sa Bible, di ba? Pero may mga istorya dyan, yung mga buhay nila nakarecord dyan para uh, tularan po natin sila. Kung may mga mistake sila, matuto na rin tayo. Huwag na natin kailangang uh, tularan pa. Tama po? Yan. Kaya, isang example dyan si, si uh, David. Napakaganda po yung sinabi ng uh, uh, writer ng uh, Acts, Acts 13.36. Ang sabi niya dito, For David, after he had served the purpose of God in his own generation, he fell asleep and was slain with his forefathers. Si David po, hindi perfect yung buhay niya. May mga mistakes din siya. But the Bible is telling us that when he fulfilled the purpose of God in his life, He rested with His forefathers. Yan po ang realidad ng buhay na tayo ay ibabalik natin yung binigay ni Lord na buhay sa atin. Okay? But our, I hope that our goal while we are here on earth is to fulfill the purpose that God has set for us. And we desire to have that commendation. Sa buhay natin ito, Di ba? Kapag ikaw nagmag-aaral ka, pwede kang uh, uh, maka, maka... Dahil sa effort na ginawa mo, ginawa mo yung parte mo bilang sudyante, you can have that Latin title after graduation, cum laude, su, uh, magna cum laude, suma cum laude. Ang ganda nun, di ba? Okay yun. Kapag ikaw naman yung empleyado ka, pwede kang uh, ma-awardan. Ma Gawad, uh, ano, yung, ano yung mga awards na binibigay ng civil service. Ano yung mga awards na binibigay ng kumpanya kung saan ka. Ang, ang ganda po noon. Naranasan din natin yun. Kahit mga low level lang. Pero iba. Iba yung saya ng uh, isang empleyado na ma-recognize. Okay po yun. But I hope that the greatest desire that we have is when we return this life and the Lord Jesus will say, well done, good and faithful servant. If we understand that this life is too short to live, that the, the number that uh, our days in this life is numbered. I hope that we will look into that recognition, that award that uh, the Lord Jesus will give to us in the future. And at this time, I'd like to, uh, I, I know most of you are uh, already aware of that, but in case lang na hindi nyo pa alam, na yung speaker po natin dati dito noong December, si Bishop Ferdy Kabiling is already with the Lord. Kung kayo ay mga volunteers na, na active dito sa church during our appreciation night, ang isang memory kay Pastor Pastor Bishop Ferdy, ako yung ginamit niyang illustration when he was talking about going the extra mile. As a member of this church, when you go the extra mile, ako yung pinagbuhat-buhat niya ng bag. Kani alam ko ano yung bag. We were recalling our uh, fond memories with Bishop Ferdy. At yun yung na-share na ng isa sa mga member ng Victory Group namin. And uh, I was assigned by Pastor Ross to fetch him in the, in the hotel at the time. We have uh, private moments with him. Ang isang sabi niya sa akin, I'll come back later and we'll talk more about that thing, that area. It never happened. Because he is already with the Lord. His name is synonymous with evangelism in our movement. And he has touched a lot 
of lives with that 58 years that he lived in this world, he made a great impact. Of course, uh, God called him as a spiritual leader. God called him as, uh, as a bishop in our movement. And we are deeply saddened with his passing. But we know that Bishop Ferdi accomplished the purpose the plan of God in His life. Pwede ba nating palapakan si Lord sa buhay ni Bishop Freddy? Thank you, Lord, for the life of Bishop Freddy. And I hope that the life of Bishop Freddy will continually inspire us. With that 58 years of his life, yeah, of course, isa sa mga pinakamalaking uh, uh, accomplishment niya sa kanyang buhay, yung tinakbo niya sa Ranggani to Apari. Yung maalala niyo yun, yung Run 50, Run 50. When he was 50 years old, that was his goal. He was able to accomplish that. And the, uh, yung mga karamihan pastor natin sa Manila, they were trained uh, in his leadership. At isa sa mga nagsisirculate na video niya nga nung before siya namatay, that was March 6, I think, na lumabas yung video na yun. Yung sinasabi niya na, when I'm gone, will there be people who will miss me? Will there be people who will cry for me? And jokingly, sinabi niya yung son-in-law niya. At nag-post si Ian, sabi niya, and I really cried, dad, sabi niya. Sa atin, sa atin po, pag uh, darating yung araw na yun, Will there be people who will also notice us? Because we have, we have uh, been a part of their transformation. We have been a part of the good life that they are living now. I hope that we'll make time to, to share our life to others, to share our resources to others, that we will be able to make this life a better place to live. Kaya ngayon, habang buhay pa po tayo, Ang tanong, are we living our life as a positive influence to others? It's better. The day of our death is better than the day of birth. Na pagdating ng araw na yon, maging totoo yung salita na ito sa buhay natin. If we will just do our part in uh, influencing others to become godly or to be able for them to be able to accomplish the purpose of God in their life. Second point is this. We move to verse 2. Ang sabi niya dyan, it is better to go to a house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting for this is the end of all mankind and the living will lay it to heart. King Solomon in all his wisdom was saying, enjoy life. Enjoy the things that you do. I'm, I'm referring to other chapters of the book of Ecclesiastes. And one thing uh, that he said there in, uh, in, uh, in chapter 6, enjoy life with your wife. Sino pa yung mga may asawa dito? Lalaking, uh, tatay, mga tatay. <laughs> Ang sabi po ni uh, Solomon dito, enjoy life with your wife. Sana hindi lang ikaw nag-enjoy. Na lumalabas ka, basketball, whatsoever. You enjoy... Uh, a company of your friends. Pero ang sinasabi ni Solomon, enjoy life with your wife. Okay? And also, sabi niya, eat the fruit of your labor. Okay daw, na, na, na ma-enjoy mo rin yung uh, pinagpapagura mo. Kaya sabi niya dyan, point number two natin, it's better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. Balikhan ko pala yun. House of feasting is the, the, a, a place where you could enjoy the things that you have. Di ba? House of feasting. Okay din yun. Yun yung isang uh, uh, purpose din ni God kung bakit meron tayo. Di po ba? Siya yung uh, nagbigay ng wisdom ng tao dito sa Bible kasi uh, although sa ating ngayon iba na yung association about, about wine but he was the one who gave wisdom to people to, for them to be able to create wine that they could use that for uh, merry, uh, merriment, merrymaking. Okay po, may mga piyesta na sila dati pa. But 
we know that that's different uh, thing when we talk about wine now dahil kwan na, talagang sagad-sagad na yung tao. But that is what Solomon is saying to us here. Okay lang, okay lang na, na masaya ka rin. Gusto ni, ng Diyos na masaya tayo. Diba? Be joyful always, parang sabi nga ni uh, Paul sa New Testament na. Yung pumunta ka sa mga masasayang lugar, okay yun, okay yun. Lalo na kung super pagod ka na sa trabaho, kailangan ng break, di ba? Kung kailangan, kung kailangan mo rin bumili, sabi ni, ni Isaiah, why do you spend things that does not satisfy you? Why will you spend money on what is not bread? So makita natin na ang Diyos natin, gusto niya na, na ma-enjoy din natin ang buhay na to, mag-isang buhay na to. Pero of course, Iba yung concept ng tao na naman when you have one life to live and you spend it by yourself. Okay? YOLO ang tawag natin doon sa mga panahon ngayon. Yun, eh? You only live once. Kaya, sige na, punta ka sa kung anong lugar, kung saan ka masaya, gawin mo na lahat. Hindi po yun ang uh, sinasabi ni King Solomon dito. ba? Diba? Kaya sa verse, sa chapter, jumping to chapter 12, nang sabi niya doon, chapter uh, 11 to 12 na, okay, kapataan mo, sige, magsaya ka. Pero, lahat ng mga yan ay i-judges ni Lord. So, may wisdom pa rin dapat. Okay? Hindi yung you only live once and you do anything that you want. No. It should, you, you should still be guided with the wisdom of God. Okay? Going to the house of feasting. But, there is a better thing. That is what Solomon is saying here in, uh, in verse 2. It's better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. Why? It was explained here in the next uh, uh, part of that uh, sentence. It's a verse. For it is the end of all mankind and the living will lay it to heart. Na kapag pumunta ka daw sa lamay, maririmind sa'yo na ikaw din ay susunod na. Panapanahon lang yan. Nauna lang yung nandun sa nalilalamayan at that time. But one day, you will also be there. When we are in a house of mourning, we are reminded that death is just on its way. We will be the next in that, in that place. That death is also coming. And we become aware We, we become uh, uh, cons- uh, what you call that? We, we, we have that wisdom to live every day of our life na hindi natin sinasayang na nandun ka lang sa kwarto na nag-EML lang o diligay anong online game that you're wasting your, your, your time, their precious time. Ano yung mga bagay-bagay na patulog-tulog ka lang instead of going to church na natulog. Pero hindi naman kayo. Grabe, no? Eh, kayo yung uh, super aga magising, mga iba sa inyo nagising 5 o'clock, uh, pag 5 o'clock pa lang nagre-ready na para pumunta sa si church. Palakpakan mo ulit yung katabi mo, kapatid. Grabe, no? Pero kung ganun talaga ang habit ng iba, may afternoon service pa naman tayo. Hopefully, yung mga iba, kapag nagigising pa yung mga nasa online, at least nanonood na sila. Pero kung may mga natutulog pa ang kayong kapamilya, remind them may PM services pa naman tayo. Okay? So, sige po. Sabi niya, balikan natin, it's better to go to a house of mourning. May isang uh, libro na nag-influence sa akin po dito, ano? yung Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Nabasa niyo na po yan? Diba? Inaral namin kasi sa uh, group ni Pastor Ross dati, sa leadership group ni Pastor Ross dati. Yung habit number two, ang sabi niya dyan, begin with the end in mind. At uh, ang sinasabi ng author, isang ginamit niya na illustration dyan, ay kapag nag-attend ka daw ng living, Ti- ang titignan mo doon, i-picture mo na mukha mo yung nandun na sa coffin. Oh, mas grabe naman yun, di ba? Pag dumungaw ka na yun, hindi picture ng auntie ng angel mo, pero picture mo mukha mo. Tapos, pakikinggan mo daw yung mga, yung eulogy na sasabihin nila, tapos i-assess mo yung sarili mo, ano ba din ang sasabihin nila sa akin pag ako na yung nandun? Yun daw. That, that's wisdom. That's one of the best habits that we can develop in ourselves. Begin with the end in mind. You are already looking at the time that you will die. So you will be uh, more careful how you live your life 
every day. Kung ako din pala yung mamamatay na, thinking of that, uh, that uh, event that is coming, you will have more wisdom in living your life. Kaya ang nire-recommend niya dyan, yung gawa ka ng, uh, ng life plan mo, gawa ka ng, uh, ng mission statement mo. Anong pinapagawa ni Lord sa'yo? At paano mo gagawin yun? At the end of your life, nakapag ikaw ay uh, gagawa na ng memorial of funeral service, what will your family member say about you? What will your co-worker will say about you? What will uh, the people around you in your community will say about you? Now, we have the time to correct that. We have the time to, uh, to make that happen in our life. Kasi mayroong isang tao na gumawa niyan nung una, si Alfred Novel. Maalala niyo pa si Alfred Novel? Napag-aralan natin yun nung mga elementary days natin about scientists. He was the one who invented, invented dynamite. Galing niyo talaga. Yun. Na, 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 kanya yun, na invent niya siya, umaman siya. Pero one day, he attended the funeral of his brother and he was just curious of uh, what people will say about uh, his brother. Bumili siya ng newspaper. Kasi hindi pa naman, wala pa namang Facebook nung panahon na yun. <laughs> Dahil sa Facebook, ang dami na nating nababasa. And uh, instead, that, instead of the name of his brother that he saw there, it was his name. Alfred Nobel, the inventor of a device that killed a lot of people, is now dead. <laughs> Hindi yung kapatid niya, kundi siya mismo. At sinasabi na yung naka ng isang device na papatay ng marang, maraming tao ay patay na. And he was shocked, saying, ah, ganito pala ang tingin ng tao sa akin, na ako ay papatay ng maraming tao. In instead of, kaya kasi siya, uh, uh, of course, he was, uh, he was, hired by a company to, uh, to create a device that will be a defense to their military uh, uh, regiment. Pero yun pala ang tingin ng tao sa kanya. Na siya ay pumapatay, nag-invento ng papat kung paano mas maraming mapatay ang tao. And he corrected that. He used his money now as to, to uh, create an organization we call that Nobel Peace Prize. That is an award given to people who excel in the field of science, technology, and uh, uh, how to maintain peace in the world. And that's one of the most coveted uh, reward or award in the world now. And we don't remember that kind of, uh, of uh, uh, image for Alfred Nobel now. Na hindi na siya ipapatay ng maraming tao. Kundi it's, a, it's an award, it's a worthwhile, so he, uh, it's a most sought award among uh, professionals excelling in that field. Okay, so ganun po. Sa atin ngayon, what would we like to be remembered for? Ano yung gusto mo na maalala ka ng mga tao na mahal mo sa buhay? Sa school mo, mga classmate mo natin, kapag uh, later on, kapag... Uh, sila din ay i-assign ng family member mo na magsalita tungkol sa iyo. What will they share about you? Lalo na yung mga katrabaho mo, yung mga mahal mo sa buhay. Anong sasabihin kung ikaw married ngayon? Anong sasabihin ng asawa mo later in yun? Na isasabihin sa uh, mga mag-a-attend ng funeral service mo. What would you like to be remembered for? Point number three is this. Sorrow is better than laughter. Going to uh, verses three to four, it says here, Sorrow is better than laughter. For by sadness of face, the heart is made glad. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, but the heart of fools is in the house of merriment. Laughter. Okay. Yung mga kasama ko dati, mga, mga, hindi pa uso ang mga, mga online uh, books natin. May mga Reader's Digest, no? Hindi ko naman ma-afford yung Reader's Digest natin. Nakikibasa lang ako doon sa antiko. Nang hiram ako yung mga medyo gutay-gutay na. Pero there is, a, there is a section there, there is a uh, yeah, uh, part of that book where it says, Laughter is the best medicine. At yun yung mga jokes. Wow, talaga. Pag, uh, pag nabasa mo yan, talaga, ah! Di ba? 
Kapag uh, tumatawa ako dati ng ganon, ang yaman dati, obrahan mo, pati tinanan ko, ay eh, natatawa din siya. Kaya kahit hindi nila narinig kung wag ikaw ay tumawa, yung mga tao sa paligid mo tumatawa. Yes or no? Yes? Wag lang dyan sa kalsada, tumatawa ka na. <laughs> Medyo kanya tayo. Pero kung naka-headset ka, may pinapakinggang kang comedy. Pwede lang naman yun, di ba? Kaya no, pati nga rin sila, kahit pinagtatawa na ka na, alam niya, topak na yan, tolay niya eh. Kahit sila, sila din ay na, napapa-smile. Yes? Di ba? So, uh, laughter is a, uh, there is a medical, uh, medical, uh, uh, na to, uh, may, may, kanyan, may findings sila that uh, when, when you laugh, it releases happy hormones. Tama po na it could uh, uh, release or ke- could uh, force out toxins in your body. Yan, lumalabas yung mga uh, toxins kapag ikaw mismo ay masaya kapag ikaw ay tumatawa. Okay? Pero kapag tumatanda yung, yung tao, ayaw nang tumawa, seryosong seryoso sa buhay. <laughs> diba? Hindi naman. Sa church, uh, may mga tumatawa, di ba? Kaya, yung, kaya nga yung unang kinakanta natin, ang saya-saya, diba? yung fast at saka yung islo na song. Kaya huwag natin kaligtaan, maaga pumunta para makasabay tayo doon. Yung mga pagsumasayo, puwang palakpak ka, sumasayo pa yung ganda, tutuwa ka doon sa katabi mo. Pero sumabay ka na rin, di ba? Okay, those, those are uh, ways that we can express joy. O kung tumawa ka man, okay, nagpag, nagkwento ka ngayon sa victory group mo, sumabay ka na rin. Diba? Hindi yung seryoso ko lang tumatawa sila. Ganyan. Ay ko nga, tumawa. Hmm? Tumawa ka rin. That's good. But again, the Bible says, sorrow is better than laughter. Na kapag ikaw daw ay nalungkot, mas maganda. Kaysa sa palaging, of course, wag naman palaging uh, sorrow. Kasi baka kwan din yun, di ba? May iba rin yung effect. Baka ma-depress ka. Pero tignan natin yung normal view about uh, sorrow. Ang sabi niya dyan, uh, sorrow is better than laughter. For by sadness of face, the heart is made glad. When you are made sorrow in such a way that you read the Bible and you know that you are not applying that, that is what the Bible says, godly sorrow. Apostle, Apostle Paul was saying that in uh, 2 Corinthians 7.10 that he wrote the Corinthians that uh, caused grief to them. Nung binasa nila yon, ang sinasabi niya dyan, alam ko na nalungkot kayo, na kayo ay nagluksa. Sabi no, grief, sorrow. Nung binasa niyo yan. Pero, okay lang sa akin yon, dahil ang alam ko na nagluksa kayo, nagluksa kayo dahil at ang epekto nun ay kaligtasan ninyo. And that's, that is one thing that we do in the church. When we preach the Word of God, we may offend some of you. You may not like the, the, the word that you are hearing, especially when we confront sin in your life. When you are living a life that is not aligned with the plan of God, sabi nyo, sakit naman nun. Eh, pero si Pastor Ross, may, may skill siya ng kwan niya pag sabi niya ng ganun. Pero sa akin, minsan masakit. <laughs> sabi ng misis ko, parang iba yung pagkasabi mo kanina. And I hope that, uh, that even as I say those things to you, that you will also experience that godly grief that will lead you to repentance. If we say words that, if we, we echo the words from the Bible that will touch an area in your life that you are not living according to the words of God, I hope that that will be also the action that you will do. You repent. Magsisi ka, kapatid. Dahil yun yung rason kung bakit kami nandito. Although we say jokes, we tell jokes kung minsan, we are not here to entertain you. We are here, the church is the place where you will hear the Word of God. And our desire is when you hear the Word of God, you repent. Because we have limited number of days in this life. That when you apply those words, when you accept those words of God in your life, you will have that heart of wisdom. You desire to repent. You say, Lord, Ikaw ang nakak- nakikiusap sa akin na ito. Huwag mo nang hintayin na nandung ka sa deathbed mo, kapatid, para magsisi ka. We've, we've uh, heard stories about those things na greatest regret nila 
hindi nila ginawa yung sinasabi ng Diyos sa buhay nila. Huwag natin hintayin yung ganun. Na wala ka ng oras para i-recover ka. Nang nandun na, nag, naghihingalo ka na. Ang sabi mo, sana hindi ko nagawa. No, sorry, pastor, sorry. Uh, sa misis mo, kaya sa mister mo, sa anak mo, nagsusorry ka. That's, we, that's one thing that we can correct now. Now that we are still alive. At may mga kaibigan tayo dito na na-experience nila yung near-death experience. Near death, they, 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 gone, they were uh, in those situations and near-death experiences. But encourage them to serve God all the more. Uh, I'm referring to two of our uh, faithful uh, ushers for 8 a.m. Uh, that, that's uh, Brother Dong Kalimag and Jesse Tulyang. Sila po yung palagi yung maagang mamimit dyan sa hallway natin. Ito yung mga kapatid natin ito, they experienced those near-death uh, near uh, scenario in their life. Brother Dong uh, met a heart attack in 2011. Jesse Tulliao uh, experienced a, uh, an accident, a motor vehicle accident in 2018. Nag, uh, these people have been serving the Lord sa answering ministry. Pero nung nakarecover sila all the more, na nag-serve sila. Ang palagi nilang sinasabi sa akin, go gravel naman, nakaka-bless kayo. Ang sabi nila palagi sa akin, second life ko na to, pastor. Every moment of my life, kung pwede ako mag-serve kay Lord, mag-serve ako sa Kanya. Kalakpakan natin ang buhay ng mga kaibigan natin. Now, for us, who have never experienced that, hindi na natin kailangang hintayin yung ganun na sitwasyon. Now that we are still alive, I hope that every moment of our life, every area of our life, let's serve God. Ngayon, malalak, ang lakas natin. Hindi mo kailangan magkasakit ka. Hindi mo kailangan ma-accident ma rin, kagaya nila. Na habang may lakas ka, habang mayos pa yung, uh, yung uh, katawan mo, na pagsilbihan mo si Lord, we have different ministers in the church. I hope that you will find a way that uh, you can use this life that God has given you. The, your number of days in this world is uh, being depleted every day. Reduce every day. Deduct, there is a deduction of the number of days in your life every day. I hope that we will use that to bless the Lord, to serve God. Three verses here before I end. Psalms 90 verse 10, ang sabi niya, the years of our life is 70 or even by reason of the strength, 80. I'm 50 years old now, at ang pinag ko na taon ay yung 70. 70 na lang. Kasi by reason of his strength, kapag may lakas ka daw, pwede nga abot ng 80. O sige Lord, mga 70 na lang. 20 years ko na lang. How about you? <laughs> yung mga, may mga 70s, may mga 80s na tayo dito. Mga 5 years, 10 years. Yung mga bata-bata pa, hindi mo pa siguro iniisip yun, pero darating din yan, kapatid. Hindi man, may mga, mga bata pa. Hindi, that is not a, a that, that's just the word that was uh, given by Moses to us. 70 or 80. Pero pwedeng 50, pwedeng 40, pwedeng 30. But if that happens, I hope that you have lived the purpose of God in your life. In the conclusion of uh, King Solomon in the book of Ecclesiastes, ang sabi niya dito, The end of the matter, all has been heard. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Na habang nabubuhay daw tayo, ang focus natin, ang focus natin ay gawin natin yung sinasabi ng Diyos. Basahin natin kung hindi mo ba nabasa. Diba? Basahin mo, aralin mo, kapatid, at i-apply mo rin. That's the whole duty of man. And what's the greatest command that He has given to us? What's the great commission? Matthew 28, 19-20. Ito po ang sinasabi ng Panginoong Yesus when He resurrected. Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit, teaching them to observe all that I have commanded you. And behold, I'm with you always to the end of the days. This is what I love about our church. Our church helps us to fulfill that general purpose of God.
tuman. Kung magkakaiba man, man tayo ng uh, trabaho, ng uh, sitwasyon sa buhay, ang sinasabi ng Diyos, gawin mo yon. Ang, ang, ang turo sa atin ng church, let's honor God in every way of our life. Kung ikaw, yung sudyante ka, you, you find a way to honor God there. You find a way to glorify God there. If you are an employee, if you are a parent, if you are a grandparent now, you are already retired, I hope that we'll find a way to give glory, to give honor to God. And let's not also miss His greatest command, and that is to go. And while you are doing those things, being a student, being a, a, uh, an employee, a business person, let's continue to honor God and find a way to make disciples. That's one way that we can live a life with the wisdom of God. Let's all stand as we pray. Yes, God. Lord, we want to thank you for reminding us today that uh, our days in this life is numbered, oh God. Lord, thank you for your word that you have given to us. And it's our prayer that all of us will have the desire to live our life according to your word, according to your wisdom. Lord, give us that courage, oh God, to obey. There are times, Lord God, na parang hirap namin gawin to dahil parang mas okay yatang gawin ito. But you have reminded us today that there are better ways to do things. There are better decisions that we can we can uh, choose upon, oh God. And it's our prayer that you will fill us with your Holy Spirit that we may be guided every day of our life to make that best decision to follow you no matter what. Hindi ko yung boses ng uh, kung sino-sinong tao, lalo na ang boses ng kaaway na nag-udyok sa amin na gagawa ng mga bagay-bagay na para sa amin ay mabuti. But we know that the best thing in life is when we make the decision to follow your ways, O oh God. And I pray for that strength to come upon us, O oh God. Because one day when we are in that uh, place that there is no more power in us to do what you have commanded us to do, masasayangan lang kami, Lord God. But now that we are still alive, we know that you're reminding us to do your will in our life. And it's my prayer, O God, that my brothers and sisters today, kung ano man yung nire-remind mo sa buhay nila na hindi nila ginagawang tama, na hindi nakalinya sa inyong salita, Lord, this day, Lord, it's my prayer that they'll make that decision to follow you for the rest of their life. Thank you, Lord, for your word. Thank you for your wisdom. Last people that I'd like to pray today, Kung nandito ka ngayon, kapatid, at uh, hindi ka pa sigurado na pag kinuha na ni Lord yung pinahiram niyang buhay sa'yo, hindi ka sigurado na pupunta ka sa heaven. Ang sinasabi ng salita ng Diyos, if you surrender your life to Him, you are assured of that eternal life. If you are that person, I'd like you to raise your hand and I'll pray for you. Yes, God. Lord, you see these hands being raised to you. I pray that you will move in their life today and make this day as a turning point in their life as they surrender fully their life to you, O God. If you are that person raising your hand, I'll ask you to follow this simple prayer with me. Say, Heavenly Father, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And right now, O God, I ask for your forgiveness. Cleanse my heart, Lord Jesus. And right now, I accept you as the Lord, Master, and Savior of my life. Sit at the throne of my heart, Lord Jesus. Take control of my life and help me to live for you for the rest of my life. In Jesus' name, and everybody say,
Amen and amen. I found my fortress in you, and my soul is secure with you, my resting place is in your name forever. something today blessed by the word isang malakas na palapak naman para kay Lord sa buhay ni Pastor Joe um, I was blessed ano sa church na to dahil I have been um, kumbaga dalawa yung nagme-mentor sa akin una dati si Pastor Joe at ngayon si Sir Art and one thing na hindi ko makalimutan na sharing ni Pastor Joe noon is that yung sinabi niya sa Psalms 90 
Yung sabi niya na, teach us to number our days so that we may gain a heart of wisdom. Ang lakas ng impact nun sa buhay natin, sa buhay ko actually, na, o oh nga pala, no? short live lang tayo. And, paano ba tayo i-remember ng mga kakilala natin, yung mga nakausap natin, yung mga na-interact natin sa buhay? How they will remember us? So, sana ganun tayo, meron tayong may i, uh, may i bibigay na impact sa kanila especially sa akin yun yung prayer ko that I can create an impact to somebody else at yun nga um, sa lagi kong sinasabi din to sa group ko sabi ko um, every now and then pagka may may na nalilearn kaming word nalilearn kaming word ito yung lagi kong sinasabi how to for example in the relation to the word One thing siguro to gain wisdom, sabi ko, is, um, or um, in the relation to the word, uh, gaining wisdom is, one good thing at a time, create lang tayo ng isang mabuti sa buhay natin. One good thing at a time, one wisdom at a time, one faith at a time. From faith to faith, sabi nga, from glory to glory. Amen? So, there are two announcements before our regular tithes and offering. Um, yung uh, first announcement is the Uh, church community class. So, on April 13, 9 a.m. to 12 noon, there will be a, a, a church community class, a three-hour class that helps believers understand church life. So, encouragement ko sa atin dito is that um, uh, mag-attend po tayo kahit nga, actually, hindi lang ito dun sa mga uh, requirement nito is yung sa nakatapos na ng Purple Book class. But then, kahit natapos na natin yung church community class, mag-attend pa rin tayo tulad nga ng sabi ni, sabi ng word kanina is um, makakuha pa rin tayo ng wisdom. Let, let us be reminded na yung mga mga um, uh, class na ito is um, a way for us to gain wisdom. So, let us all be encouraged to um, attend a church community class. Registration fee costs 100 inclusive of the man manual and please don't forget to register at the back. Okay, and second announcement is yung worship night natin. So yung mga hindi na qualify sa music ministry pwede dito. On April 17 at 5.45, 7.30 p.m., we shall be having our worship night here in our assembly hall. Join us and as we gather in spirit of joy and reverence to live our voices to God. So, uh, Huwag po natin kalimutan, sabihin mo sa katabi mo, April 17, worship night yan. Okay? At dun sa mga nakatapos ng ano, ng church, uh, ng purple book class nila, sabihin mo rin sa katabi mo, ay, ayan na, attend din tayo. Okay? So, to exhort us in our uh, tithes and love offering, let's all, all welcome a woman of faith, Judge Jessica Rag. Thank you, no. Magandang umaga po sa ating lahat for our giving. Let us be encouraged by the scripture. Um, I'm reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 17, verses um, 24 to 27. Medyo mahaba po. Uh, it says in verse 27, When they came to Capernaum, the collectors of the two drachma tax went up to Peter and said, Does your teacher not pay the tax? He said, Yes. And when he came into the house, Jesus spoke to him first, to Peter, saying, What do you think, Simon? From whom do kings of the earth take toll or tax? From their sons or from their daughters? From their sons or from others? Verse 26 says, And when he said, From others, Jesus said uh, uh, to Peter, Then the sons are free. However, not to give offense to them, go to the sea and cast a hook and take the first fish that comes up. And when you open its mouth, you will find a shekel. Take that and give it to them for me and for yourself. So, two things that we can learn from the scripture. First, we see that Jesus affirmed no, his place as the right son of God in, in the kingdom of God. In this uh, scripture also, we, will see, uh, we can see uh, Jesus uh, saying or showing to Peter that greatness in the kingdom of God comes from humility. It comes from service. No? Jesus, the, the son of God, he submitted himself to the authorities. He submitted to the authorities. 
to the authorities by paying the temple tax. At ganun din po tayo. We are also called to submit to the authorities just as Jesus did. No? So sa second point natin, we can see that Jesus showing us, pinapakita ni God, remember yung sa fish na andun yung coin. Di ba? Sobrang amazing nun. God is telling us, God is showing us that He can command Jesus can command resources. Jesus can command provisions to come upon us miraculously. Di ba lahat tayo, we have experienced how God miraculously provided during those times na kailangan, kailangan natin ng pangbayad ng tuition fee, pangbayad ng bills, pangbayad sa hospital, or whatever that need be. God miraculously provided for all those things. And as we tell others, as we tell others of our stories, of our testimonies, kung paano sinagot ni God yung ating mga pangangailakan, mira, uh, pangangailakan miraculously, no? these people are blessed, they are encouraged, and ultimately, we are bringing or we are giving glory and honor to the Lord. And today, as we give our tithes on, and uh, our offerings, no? we are acknowledging that what we give today is God's miraculous provision. What we do today is a response to God's generosity, to God's faithfulness, to God's goodness in our lives. No? Okay, let, let us pray. Yes, Father God, thank you for today. Lord, thank you for this opportunity, Panginoon, to honor you, to give glory to you, to worship you with our giving, Panginoon. We acknowledge, Lord God, that what we do today is, Lord, is because of your miraculous provision, Panginoon. Lord, we continue to acknowledge, Panginoon, that you are, you are our generous provider, that you are our faithful giver, Panginoon. And today, Lord, would you bless my brothers and sisters as they obey you in the area of giving. I pray, Lord God, that you would be the one to honor their faith, honor their faith, Lord God, that you would be the one to reward their obedience, Panginoon. All this we pray in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. We have envelopes on your chairs where you can uh, write your prayer request. Our prayer warriors will be praying for this prayer request during our on-site prayer meeting every Wednesday at 5.45 at the Blue Room. We are also inviting you to come and pray with us. Our aircon project is now on its final completion. So we encourage everyone to participate so we can finish it soon. If you are giving um, for, our aircon, for your aircon pledge, check the other's box in the envelope and put for aircon and specify the amount. Don't forget to write your name for proper recording. And uh, let's also take this time to thank Lighthouse Cooperative for donating a 10-ton air conditioner with installation. So, malakas na palakpakan para sa Lighthouse. Okay po. So, if you prefer online giving, you can still give through GCash and fund transfer to Land Bank, San Gabriel. God bless you po as you give.
benediction. Let me just announce that uh, let us continually pray for this adjacent lot. Alam niya naman na pinagpipray natin na mabili natin nito para sa future uh, expansion. I know that we just uh, have this but I believe that in the future we will be needing this for parking and uh, extra facilities. Uh, malapit ng matapos yung negotiation but of course we, we need to pay them. Wow, grabe. Mabalakbak. So anytime Uh, anytime we're going to uh, take a pledge para magsama-sama, magtulungan tayo so that mabuo natin yung pera. And uh, please, uh, just continually ask God for a miracle to happen. Amen? Why don't we just do that first? Lord, we just uh, lift up you this lot. We just, Lord, pray for your grace, your favor, O oh God, that we will be able to purchase this lot. And Lord, I pray that uh, we ask you that you open the floodgates of heaven and pour out those blessings, Lord, para makumpleto namin kung ano mga dapat na mga requirements at payment, O God. And I pray that you touch every heart, O God, that even as we take a pledge this uh, um, any Sunday from now, Lord, we mabuo namin ang kailangan at uh, Lord, madedicate namin ang lupang yan para sa inyo. Lord, we just we want to thank you, Lord, for your grace, your generosity, to all of us. Why don't we all uh, lift up our hands as we receive this uh, prayer of blessing. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord makes His face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn His face toward you and give you peace. God bless you. Honor God. Make disciples. <laughs>